and welcome, boys and girls and grown-ups as well. What's the time? Or what time is it? I'm sure you haven't heard this question for a long time, if at all. Meow. It's a question we don't ask in the present day. Why? Because we don't have to, we don't need to. Historically, not long time ago, things were very, very different, and the question had been asked quite often. Welcome to the Greenwich Royal Observatory in London. Yes, they pronounce it Greenwich, not Greenwich or Greenwich, but Greenwich. I'm sitting in the so-called octagon. No, no, <laughs> not in Pentagon. <laughs> this room is called octagon because it has eight walls. This room was designed by Sir Christopher Wren the architect of the world-famous St. Paul's Cathedral, located in the city of London, where I live. Octagon was built mainly to make impression on important visitors. Now, I am making this video here to make an impression on you. <laughs> Meow. The Greenwich Royal Observatory played a vital role not just in the history of observing stars, but also in the history of timekeeping. When I ask, what's the time? What would you do? You check the time, most probably on your smartphone, and tell me. How simple, how easy. Well, it wasn't always so simple and easy. Let's start from the very beginning. Long, long time ago, people used changes in the nature as the basis of their timekeeping system. They watched the rising and setting of the sun, the moon and stars, the passing of the seasons and movement of the stars. By observing the natural cycles, they developed their notions of timekeeping. Throughout the history, various devices were used to measure time. One of the very first devices was very simple. It was a time stick, nowadays called sundial. It is very simple, and you can create a sundial on the ground in your garden or on the wall of your house. It consists of a flat plate, the dial, and a stick that casts a shadow. The shadow then shows the time on the dial. In this picture, you can see the world's oldest sundial. It was found in Egypt in the Valley of Kings. It is about 3,500 years old. Egypt is a sunny country, and they had no problem using sundials. Now, what happens when the sun is not shining, and it is cloudy? You don't know the time. What to do? We have to invent a new time-measuring device. For example, water clock. The Greeks called it klepsidra, which means a device stealing water. Time was measured by a regulated flow of water out of the vessel, and the amount was measured. In this situation, you didn't need the sun, just a few bowels. <laughs> Not enough water to be stolen in Clepsidra? No problem. Let's invent a new device. How about a kennel clock? 
We don't know where and when candle clocks were first used. Records show they were using them in China in 520 AD. There were many designs of the candle clock found. In this picture, the candle is placed against a metal plate showing hours and half hours. As the candle burns and the wax disappears, the clock shows time. This clock cannot be used outdoors. There we can use water clock, for example. Cloudy day, not enough water, and you are outdoors? You don't know the time. What to do? We have to invent a new time measuring device. Meow. This was absolutely revolutionary device. The hourglass, or sand glass, or sand clock, or sand timer, or egg timer. Meow. Why was this clock so revolutionary? It was possible to use it on ships while sailing on the sea. Sundial didn't work. Water clock didn't work. And candle clock <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> Meow. Sand clock looks nice. It is very easy to transport it. And it is accurate. Well, the only problem is it needs a uh, supervision. When the sand times up, somebody has to turn the device upside down again. Yes, yes, we need a device able to run more than just one hour without any assistance. In ancient Greece, in the 3rd century BC, they invented water-powered escapement mechanism. What? Escapement? What's that? Well, simply said, it's the mechanical clock. Each swing releases a tooth of the escape wheel, allowing the clock's gear train to move or escape by a fixed amount. As the swings go, it moves the timekeeping element, release, lock, release, lock, and the wheel moves. The sudden stopping of the escapement tooth is what generates the characteristic ticking sound. That is something we don't know anymore, right? Throughout the centuries, the escapement mechanism had been improved by many engineers. The Chinese worked on that, the Arabs did as well. However, the first modern mechanical clock with a verge escapement mechanism was invented in Europe at the beginning of the 14th century. The entire clock was very, very big. It did not have a clock face, but was built to ring the hours. The mechanical clock became the standard timekeeping device until the pendulum clock was invented in 1656. The pendulum clock was invented by a Dutch scientist by the name of Christian Huygens in 1656. It was a great revolution in timekeeping. The pendulum clock was the world's most accurate timekeeper and was used widely for almost 300 years. Meow! Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, pendulum clocks in homes, factories, offices, and railway stations served as primary time standards for scheduling all activities of daily life including work shifts or train timetables. Their accuracy allowed to speed up the pace of life and work, leading, for example, to the so-called Industrial Revolution. Industrial Revolution also accelerated 
further development and use of timekeepers. The mainspring was invented already in the 15th century that allowed portable clock to be built. However, they were not very accurate until the balance spring was added to the balance wheel in the mid-17th century. This was just one step to pocket watches. The pace of life and work accelerated and people needed to check time more often during the day. Not just uh, time to time on the pendulum clock at home or at work. However, the pendulum clock remained the most accurate timekeeper until the 1930s. Yeah. In 1833, a time ball was installed on the roof of this observatory right here above the octagon up there. The time ball was dropped at 1 p.m. each day. This signal enabled the people here in Greenwich as well as mariners on the River Thames to check their clock. Well, and what about those who did not live in Greenwich? It was very simple. You want to know the accurate time? The Greenwich time? Okay, pay for it. The Belleville family developed a very interesting business. They operated a weekly service carrying Greenwich time to paying clients in London. They were using pocket chronometers. The Belvilles started their business shortly after uh, the time ball was installed up here, and believe it or not, they were selling the Greenwich time to paying Londoners for the next 100 years. Meow. <laughs> In the 1930s, quartz oscillators were invented, bringing more accuracy to timekeeping. After almost 300 years, the pendulum clock had to retire. Well, but it looks great, don't you think? <laughs> I like it very much. Meow. The development of microelectronics in the 1960s made quartz clocks both compact and cheap to produce. The quartz mechanism became the world's dominant timekeeping technology in both clocks and wristwatches. Can we get something more accurate than the quartz mechanism? Something absolutely accurate? Well, yes. The atomic clock invented after the World War II. It doesn't look very much like a clock, right? Anyway, simply said, the atomic clock and its accuracy is based on the oscillation of the atoms of cesium at a certain temperature and strictly defined conditions. Cesium is an element and you can find it in the so-called periodic table. You find it bottom left. Atomic clock is far more accurate than any other previous timekeeping device. It is used to calibrate other clocks and also to calculate the so-called international atomic time which is a standardized civil timekeeping system. The so-called Universal Time Coordinated, UTC, is based on atomic time. This particular atomic clock is located in Switzerland. We can say it is absolutely accurate. They say the possible divergence is one second in 30 million years. Meow. Well, this video wasn't very long, but do you know how much time you spend watching it? <laughs> I will be very happy to hear from you boys and girls and grown-ups as well. Watch my videos, write me in the comments, 
follow me on social media and see you very soon in my next video. Cheerio!